ऑस्टियो नेक्रोसिस ऑफ ह्यूमरल हेड विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज अबैस्कुलर नेक्रोसिस ऑफ ह्यूमरल हेड विच इज कॉज्ड बाय ड्यू टू द डिस्ट्रप्शन ऑफ ब्लड सप्लाई टू द प्रोक्सिमल फ्यूमर एंड देयर फोर देयर इज अ डेथ ऑफ सेलुलर कंपोनेंट ऑफ द बोन सो हेलो एवरीवन मैं सिर्फ डॉक्टर अमित एंड टुडे वी विल गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट ऑस्टियो नेक्रोसिस ऑफ ह्यूमरल हेड सो इन दिस टॉपिक वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट वॉट आर द कॉजेज वॉट इज द ब्लड सप्लाई ऑफ ह्यूमरल हेड then we will discuss about what is the pathophysiology and histopathology behind the avascular necrosis of femoral head then we will discuss about the investigations what are the choices of investigations we should do and then we will discuss about the treatment part so one by one we will see so let's talk about avascular necrosis of femoral head now what are the causes which can result in avascular necrosis of femoral head so causes can be divided into two parts unilateral and bilateral so if there is involvement of only one limb or one femoral head then we can say that this is unilateral and the causes are idiopathic it can be surgery and there can be trauma and therefore there may be fracture or dislocation of the femoral head then next cause can be gout hemophilia infection erythematosus so these are some unilateral causes and if you will talk about the bilateral one it can be because of alcoholism corticosteroid therapy can be spontaneous we can say idiopathic it can be because of arteriosclerosis kaysen's disease which is also called as the acute decompression syndrome there is a release of nitrogen gases okay maybe because of the cushing syndrome gauchers disease which is lysosomal storage disorder which is autosomal recessive one okay so what happen in gauchers is there is a cellular hypertrophy and there is a bone marrow infiltration it may be because of hemoglobinopathies like sickle cell anemia lupus pancreatitis these are the causes for bilateral involvement of the femoral head so the blood supply of femoral head so blood supply is mainly by the femoral artery and the obturator artery femoral artery will give two branches the first one is lateral circumflex artery and second one is medial circumflex artery so these two branches will divide and form the different reticular arteries now medial circumflex artery will go and form posterior retinacular arteries and superior retinacular arteries and lateral circumflex artery will supply the rest of the part now the thing is major supply of the femoral head is by medial circumflex artery the most important retinacular vessels arises from the deep branches of the medial circumflex artery the vessels supply main weight bearing area of the femoral head so that's why it's very important artery so the thing is most of the femoral head blood supply is done by extracapsular arterial ring which is formed by the lateral femoral circumflex artery anteriorly and medial femoral circumflex artery posteriorly another one is foveolar artery which is derived from the obturator artery and which is called as the artery of ligamentum teres so there are two important arteries femoral artery and second one is the obturator artery so this is all about the blood supply of femoral head now let's discuss about the pathophysiology the exact pathophysiological mechanism behind the avascular necrosis of femoral head are not always clear and generally regarded as being multifactorial regardless of the participating factor the outcome is essentially the death of osteocytes so what happened is there is decrease in subchondral blood supply which induces state of hypoxia because of state of hypoxia there is loss of integrity of the cell membrane which further causes necrosis now if you will see here there is a predominantly neutrophils and macrophages if you will see in histopathological examination so there is a necrosis of the femoral head now because of the necrosis there is subchondral collapse and because of subchondral collapse there is a yes there is a formation of the osteophytes and all those things which is called as the joint degeneration so because of that there is a restriction of the range of motion pain upon abduction and internal rotation and tenderness to palpation of the hip region now let's talk about the investigation early identification can significantly affect the outcomes diagnosis is made by pairing the clinical presentation with appropriate imaging so the initial or the first investigation of choices yes x-ray and we need two orthogonal view okay so ap and lateral most sensitive like more than nuclear bone scan is mri so we can do mri for our final diagnosis but in between we can also do ct scan planar scintigraphy spect okay so initial is x-ray and most sensitive is mri the use of imaging in context of patient symptoms can help guide appropriate treatment 
So first we'll discuss about the plane film radiography and then we'll discuss about the MRI. Now you are a radiologist, then it is a very important thing for you. So in plane radiograph, we have Ficart and Arlet classification. So in Ficart and Arlet classification, there are four stages. Anyway, using plane film, the sensitivity for detecting early stages of the disease is very low as 41% and this is the study. So in Ficart and Arlet classification, there are four stages. So the stage zero, which is called as the preclinical and pre-radiological and here only if it has already been diagnosed in the contralateral hip then only we can say that here we have the stage 0. The normal findings on radiographs and positive findings on MRI of the or bone scintigraphy can be there. Then stage 1 is early resorptive stage. So here in x-ray we can see minimal osteoporosis or blurring and poor definition of the bony trabeculae at the site of involvement. Then next stage is second where there is a uh, demineralization appears in the form of small cyst within the femoral head and there can be patchy sclerosis usually in the superior lateral aspect of the femoral head because that is the main weight bearing area so which is also called as the reparative stage stage two then stage three it is called as early collapse and here there is a linear subcortical lucency seen representing a fracture line is present immediately beneath the articular cortex. It may extend into the articular cartilage at the superlateral aspect of the femoral head and this is termed as crescent sign and which is very characteristic of stage 3 which is called as early collapse. Then stage 4. So stage 4 which is called as progressive degenerative disease and there is further flattening of the femoral head and loss of smooth convex contours with severe collapse and destruction of the femoral head which is leads to progressive degenerative joint disease with joint space narrowing, marginal osteophyte formations and osteochondral cyst formation as we can see here. So this is the stage 4. This is about the plane radiograph. Now let's look for the MRI thing. So in MRI, there is a Michaels classification. But before starting with the Michaels classification, MRI is the most sensitive imaging modality for detecting osteonecrosis, especially at the early stages of the disease. And it is more sensitive than the nuclear bone scan. So Michaels classification divides into four classes, A, B, C, D, and it depends on the T1 and T2 signal. So on T1, if it is high, and on T2, it is intermediate, then it is analogous to fat and which is called as the class A. In class B, which is representing the subacute blood and which is T1 hyperintense and T2 hyperintense. Then class C, which is representing the fluid or edema and edema will be hyper on T2 and low on T1. And next one is fibrosis, which is on both there is a low signal intensity on T1 and T2 weighted images. So these are the four classes which is classified by the Michels and called as the Michels classification. Secondary signs and sequelae of AVN can also be present at the MRI imaging. There can be joint diffusion, there can be cartilaginous thinning. So this can be features may be present secondary to the AVN. Now let's look for the treatment part. So the management of avascular necrosis of femoral head ranges from conservative to invasive. The exact therapy utilizes is dependent upon the many factors. It can be on age of the patient, level of pain or discomfort, location and extent of necrosis, comorbidities and of course whether the collapse of articular surface is there or not. The treatment decision should be based on the staging of the lesion but mainly on the presence or absence of collapse. Conservative management spans varieties of non-operative treatment. This may include the physical therapy, restricted weight bearing, alcohol sedation, discontinuation of the steroid therapy if patient is taking steroid therapy, pain control medications and targeted pharmacological therapy. So these are some conservative management. There are several surgical options for those who require more invasive treatment like cold decompression is the surgical removal of affected tissue from the inside of the femoral head to decrease pressure and increase perfusion okay so what we are doing we are drilling into the bone and because of that there is a decrease in pressure which causes increase in perfusion and is the most common intervention during the pre-collapse stage 
The cell therapy have been used as adjuvants to core decompression and have been reported to be safe and suggested improved clinical outcomes with lower disease progression rate than core decompression alone. We can do bone grafting and yes, we can do hip arthroplasty or total hip re replacement. So these are some surgical options and few conservative options it's, and it's depend mainly on the stage of the disease. So this is all about the avascular necrosis of femoral head and yes, stay tuned with Medicos.